This is a continuation of the previous video, so if you haven't already, please check it out. It was my senior year in high school. I was staying with my uncle to finish up high school because my parents had moved out of town. I wanted to graduate from the high school that I was at. We were staying on the lower level of an apartment complex. Just outside of our bedroom was this walkway that came from the parking lot in front to some buildings of the complex behind our building. One night, I was sleeping with the sliding window cracked about one inch open. The cousin, who I share a room with, was away at college. Way late into the night while I was asleep, I could hear a cat outside. It wasn't close to the window, but I could hear it clearly. I woke up, but nothing else happened. The cat was mewing loudly for 10 or 15 minutes, keeping me up. But after it stopped, I was able to fall asleep again. The next night, the same thing happened. I could still hear the same cat. But during this time, after the cat stopped, the loud meows slowly turned into a sobbing lady. I could then hear footsteps coming from the parking lot direction, then close to the window, then towards the rear apartments. I didn't think much about it other than the fact that the cat's loud meows transformed into the lady's crying. The following day, I asked my uncle. He said that he heard it as well. I then went to school. Later that evening, he told me what it was. Apparently, he asked around and the other tenants told him the story. They said that some years ago, there was a lady who was beaten up badly, but not to the point where she died immediately yet. Anyways, she was able to walk back to her apartment from the parking lot. So every year, the same time and day that she died, her spirit would come back and reenact that same walk before she passed away. What I heard was the reenactment of her spirit. Another story involved me being a light sleeper that took place at the apartment where I lost my DVDs. It was a hot summer night, and I didn't have central heating and air. You northern people may know what this is. So I had my bedroom window opened all the way. The blinds were closed, of course. I can't sleep without closed blinds. Some cool air was coming in, but the blinds blocked most of it. Anyways, one night, while I was sleeping, I heard the eeriest cat. The cat's mailing sounded like the cat that I heard years ago at my uncle's apartment. Then later, it sounded halfway between a cat and an infant's cry. I immediately got goosebumps. I wanted to get up and close the window, but I was so chicken to get behind the blinds to do it that I just laid there still. That sound lasted for close to an hour. Another night, I was working on my car outside in the parking lot. It was my second car, so it wasn't like I had to finish it. But I was too lazy to pick up everything and then come back in the morning with all the stuff. So I just kept working into the wee hours of the morning. At first, it was okay, because the other tenants were still up. A couple of hours later though, everybody went to bed and everything became quiet. I can hear crickets and feel the cool breeze. About 1 a.m. after midnight though, I smelled a slightly rotten stench from the breeze. The crickets chirping stopped and the hairs on my back and arms stood up. I tried to ignore it because I was not at a good stopping point on my car. Besides, I couldn't go back to sleep. I had to just pick up my stuff and take a shower before I could sleep. Besides, how would I even fall asleep? I decided to keep on working. I tried to ignore my hair standing up and continued working. The problem was, the crickets never came back and my hair standing up just got more and more intense. It got to the point where I just couldn't work on my car anymore. Anytime I looked down by my engine bay, I felt like something was lurking behind me. Finally, I called up my girlfriend and asked her to come over. She was already asleep, but she was the understanding type, so she got up and came over. It took her a very, very long hour to get to my place. She then helped me pick up my stuff and we went inside. She stayed with me the entire night. Here's another story that I remember. There is a lake about an hour's drive away from where I live that has some pretty large trout. Some of the people I know know about it. A couple of them are my nephew and his brother-in-law. They told me about it, then wanted me to go fishing with them. 
To get to there, you need a 4x4 vehicle. From a sharp turn on the road that leads up to it, there is a steep and extremely bumpy dirt road that climbs up a hill about 300 feet long. Once you get up though, the dirt road isn't too bad. Even a regular car can drive it. The only problem is, the drive up the hill can't be done without a 4x4. Anyways, to get to the lake, you need to drive up that climb, then about 2 miles on the dirt road, which then dead ends at a cliff that leads down to the lake. Anyways, on that 2 mile stretch of dirt road, there is a section that passes by the shore about 50 feet to the left. You can't see the shore if you don't know it's there though, because there are some pretty thick woods up there. If you are familiar with that stretch of road, you know though that when you pass that area, you should not look left towards the shore. If you do, you will see an older man staring back at you. He is of a white figure with shadows of a bluish skin. Most people who want to go fish up there on that lake just look to the right side of the road when they get to that part. Interested in sharing your stories? Submit them to momchronicles at gmail.com or in the description below. Here is the next story. Thank you. Speaking of climbing hills, I had a Mexican co-worker tell me this one. Back when he was in high school, or dropped out of high school for that matter, he and his friends used to hang out at a park late at night. The park has a pretty big hill in the middle of it with a pathway sidewalk that led to the bathroom on top of the hill. One night, the guys were hanging out at the park drinking booze, nothing to get them overly drunk but just drinking beers socially. When the guys needed to urinate, they decided to go up to the bathroom. The three of them raced up to the bathroom. I guess back then, they didn't lock the bathrooms at night like they do nowadays. The guys went inside to urinate in the almost completely dark bathroom. They can see very little from the lights outside. After the guys did their business, they decided to hang out in the bathroom for a little bit. One of them decided to dare the others to play Bloody Mary. I didn't know what it was, so he told me that Bloody Mary is a game where you say Bloody Mary three times, then knock three times subsequently on the mirror. If you do it right, Bloody Mary would come out. So the one friend dared the other two to play Bloody Mary. At first, the guys didn't want to do it. Finally, my coworker said that he'd do it if nobody would. He said Bloody Mary three times, then knocked on the mirror three times. He said it again and knocked three more times. He did it for the third time and knocked a final three knock. Before he can finish saying, see, it doesn't work, the mirror started glowing from behind. You can see the outline of the mirror. Before he can turn around to the other guys, they took off without him. He scrambled out of the bathroom and they all ran down the hill to the car and took off. The next stories are about hunting. The first one is told from one of my cousins. One of my cousins and another cousin went hunting. I'm not sure what they were hunting for. That night, they spent the night in their truck. Usually, we don't camp outside in a tent if there are only a few of us. My cousin slept in the extra camp part of the pickup truck, while the other cousin slept in the bed. It had a camper shell on it. They had the truck's rear cab window, the window that separates the cab and the camper shell area open, so the two can talk to each other. Halfway through the night, my cousin who was in the front got cold, so he woke up. Lo and behold, the cab was filled with flies flying all over the place. Both front windows were rolled down, which was strange. They went to sleep with the windows closed for security purposes. He swatted out all the flies out of the cab and rolled up the windows. They then went back to sleep. About half an hour later, he woke up again. The windows were down again and the flies were back. The two of them swatted the flies out and again rolled up the window. This time, they didn't fall asleep, but started to wonder what was happening. Right then, something started to rock the truck. It was as if an elephant had came up and was rocking the truck with its side. They couldn't see anything outside, and they tried to ignore it because they were scared stiff but didn't know what to do. 
They waited the whole night while the truck was being rocked. Towards the morning, the rocking stopped. When it was daybreak, they came out expecting the truck to be damaged or something, but found the truck was just the way it was before. Well, they did find something interesting. There were small handprints about the size of a toddler's all over the truck and the camper shell. Later, they found out that their incident wasn't the only incident. The area where they slept in was known to be haunted by a creature called the Pinuvai, and other Hmong people who have hunted there have experienced the same thing. This next story is from a different cousin and is quite short. My cousin was on his way to their hunting spot. They were driving on a dirt road that would be quite dusty. When they arrived at their spot and went to the rear to open up the truck's tailgate, they saw small handprints all over the bumper and truck tailgate. In another incident, the same thing happened to them, except this time they saw some saliva dripping from the bumper as if something was trying to gnaw away at it. Here's another hunting story, except this time it's from my girlfriend's brother-in-law. The two brother-in-laws got ready to sleep in the camper shell of their truck. They put the lantern on top of the camper shell to light up the area while they sleep. This is something that I also do when I camp. As soon as they lay down to sleep, the younger brother-in-law started to snore. The older one laid there thinking about how he's going to fall asleep with all this snoring. A few minutes went by and he still can't sleep because of the snoring. Then, he noticed that the lantern went out. About 10 seconds later, it came back on. Another few minutes go by and then the lantern went out again. Within a few seconds, it turns back on. He then noticed a beam of light coming from the canyon below them. The beam went up beyond their truck. The next thing he knew, the lantern went out completely this time. The beam of light disappeared and then he saw an orb of light come from the canyon and up above their truck. The younger brother-in-law started convulsing and breathing erratically. The older one saw this and nudged him and woke him up. Then, the light disappeared. He told the younger brother-in-law what he saw, and the two of them got out and relit the lantern. They went back into the truck's camper shell and went back to sleep. The younger brother-in-law started to snore again, and again the lantern went out, and the orb of light came back. The younger brother-in-law started to convulse, throwing his arms around. The guy rocked the younger brother-in-law and woke him up. Again, the orb disappeared, and the two decided to get the hell out of there. They drove to a different part of the forest, but this time parked underneath a tree. They asked the tree to be their host, that they were going to be its guests and for it to shelter them for the night. They lit up the lantern again, and the younger brother-in-law started snoring as he slept. The older brother-in-law saw the fog rolling in around the forest and around the truck. Then. He saw the tree swaying. Wherever the tree swayed, the fog cleared. It was as if the tree was clearing the fog away. He never did get any sleep that night, but nothing else happened either. When morning came, the two of them just went home. Here's another story that I remember. There were three of us who went on a hunting trip. We set our tent in between three trees, one at the top of the tent towards where our head would be and one on either side, with the tent's door opening where there is no tree. That night, we had two lanterns going. One was left on the camping table, which was towards the tent's door. The other lantern, I hung on the tree towards the right side of the tent. I slept on that side that night. As the night grew older, I can hear the other two guys snoring. One has a deep snore, and the other was more like a whistling noise. Somehow, I managed to get a little sleep, but not for long. Towards the morning, about 3 a.m. or so, I woke up and needed to go pee very badly. I wanted to get up and just go pee, but it was so cold and dark outside. I kept holding it in, hoping I would fall back asleep. Anyways, as I lay there, I can hear footsteps outside just beyond the tree. Leaves were rustling in one spot. Then another spot about three feet away, then another three feet away again. It was as if someone with really long legs was 
walking towards our camping table. I grabbed my handgun that I usually sleep with and slowly grabbed my flashlight too. I shouldn't even need the flashlight because the tent was light enough to where I can see the surroundings through the tent fabric, including my truck. The thing was, I didn't see anything walking out there. So I slowly crawled up and made my way towards the tent door. The next thing I knew, there was a clink of our pots and pans that was on the table. I quickly unzipped the tent door open and stuck my gun, my flashlight, and my head out. And nothing. I didn't see anything. I looked left, I looked right, and I looked all around me. Nothing. I finished unzipping the door and got out. I put on my sandals and walked around the camp area. I didn't see any footprints, nor did I spot anything. Meanwhile, my heart is pounding and my hairs are standing up. The other guys were still snoring away. I finally decided to take a piss since I was already up and got out. It was so cold and I kept on aiming the flashlight all over the place. I tried to hurry up, but man, when you've been holding it in for that long, it just seems like forever. Finally, the last drop came out and I went back into the tent. I crawled back into my sleeping bag and tried to go to sleep. A couple of minutes go by of nothing but silence, other than my heartbeat still trying to calm down. When it's that quiet in the forest and you're that scared, the only thing you hear and feel is your own racing heartbeat. Then it happened again. The footsteps were outside, the leaves were rustling. This time, it started just outside the tent above my head. Again I looked and peeked through the tent fabric. I couldn't see that there was anything. I could see the trees beyond from the light of the lantern. Soon, the footsteps went around to the right like last time, three feet at a time, a big entity with long legs or something. The footsteps went towards the table again. I slowly went to the door again. I opened the door, but this time, just a little bit. I peeked out and saw nothing either. I just came back to my sleeping bag and crawled in. I laid in my sleeping bag for the entire night until the morning came and the other guys woke up with the sunrise. I then fell asleep when I got more comfortable that they were up. The next night, on that same camping trip, two more guys joined us. They were smart and slept in their truck. Again, like usual, we had two lanterns going on. I woke up in the middle of the night again to a whistling sound. Because of what had happened the night before, I was confused and scared. The lantern that was on the table was out, and the one by the tree was getting dim. I was a little annoyed because I would have to go out and refuel them and relight them. So I go out, flashlight in one hand and gun in the other. I had my headlamp on too, but it's not as bright as my solar force flashlight. I had to set down the flashlight and my gun on the table so I could refuel and relight the lanterns, but I had to do it one at a time. It was cold and dark outside, and it seemed like an eternity getting those lanterns back on. Finally, I got them both going, and I decided to go pee too. After that, I got back to bed, and that's when I heard the footsteps again. Good thing is that I didn't hear them in the dark, but whatever it was, I only heard it when the lanterns were running very brightly. Here's another story from my workplace. Once upon a slightly drizzly day, my boss calls me on my cell phone, something which she doesn't do except in the case of an absolute emergency. It was a Sunday, why the heck would he be calling me? I decided to answer and see what's up. He said, Do you want some more hours? In a confused state, I replied with, Huh? What? He said, Do you want more hours? We have an email problem. All I need you to do is go in and check it out and see if you can fix it. You get four hours for just showing up. Why the heck would anyone want to do work on a Sunday? But anyways, since it was for the big wig of the company, I figured four hours won't hurt anything. I told my boss, sure, uh, I'll go in and check it out. Great, he says. I told him that I'd call him when I got there. Not wanting to go alone, I decided to take a buddy of mine along. We drove there and decided that we'll go through the back door 
since I didn't know where the other alarm disarm panels were for the building. The only problem with coming in through the back door was, once disarming the alarm, I would have to go all the way through the darkness of the building to the front and turn on the lights. There were no light switches at the back. Anyways, sure enough, I disarmed the alarm and made my way through the maze and turned on the lights. We came back to my desk and checked the email system. Great, it turns out that I can fix it, but it'll take an approximate two hours. So I started to fix it up. While the server was doing its own thing, which I knew it was going to take a while, I went to the can. I wasn't too sure where my buddy was at this time, so I just yelled out to him that I'll be in the restroom. He answered and confirmed. I went and did the smelly thing and came back. I was concerned that he would be wandering the hallways, so I came out to look for him. I went through the hallways but could not find him, so I just came back to my desk and I continued with what I was doing. A few minutes went by and he comes back. I asked him where he was. He said that after I went to the bathroom, he just checked out all the hallways and then he went to do the smelly thing in the bathroom as well. That was probably when I came out and started to look for him. So I finished fixing the server and we came out. I told him how it was said that our workplace may be haunted. He said that while he was in the stall, he heard somebody come into the bathroom. He thought it was me, but he didn't think anything of it. He heard the door open and then close. I told him that I never came to check for him in the bathroom. I left the bathroom and then went to look for him in the hallways only. And when I came out, I was sure that he hadn't come in there yet. More about this incident in the next part.